Japan, a land of 125 million people with almost 30% of them over 65 years old. It is the oldest population in the world. Japan also has a high urbanization rate. In 1960, just 63% of people lived in cities. In 2020, 92% did. As the young people leave the countryside, the combined effect is that large numbers of villages and houses have become abandoned. Here, elements of traditional Japanese life are being lost, and among them the houses, the minka, the machia, that epitomize Japanese architecture and carpentry. Of course, there are reasons why Japanese young and old shy away from these buildings. They're cold, big, and as they're made of wood, require ongoing care and maintenance. However, they are also the quintessential Japanese house, and the Japanese rural landscape, as well as the old cities like Kyoto, wouldn't be the same without them. But there is some hope. We're starting to see people, including yours truly, taking over and renovating these buildings, whether to use as homes, guest houses, or cafes, showing that they do have a role in modern Japan. Back in 1973, author and Japanologist Alex Kerr had bought an abandoned house in the Ia Valley in Shikoku for $1,800, which he described in his seminal book, Lost Japan. And here I am in Shikoku with Alex, sitting in the house that he bought. Alex, thanks for having me. Well, thanks for coming all the way up to Ia, and I'm really delighted that you're here because you're the new generation. And when we started 50 years ago, this wasn't done. This was considered pretty weird and now you've made it mainstream. In Lost Japan, which came out in 1996, the yeah. English version, mm -hmm. um, you talked about how Japanese traditional culture, architecture and customs were disappearing after the Second World War. Has anything or what has changed since then? Uh, well, the decline continues, uh, especially to the natural environment with uh, public works and dams and roads and all that. But the main thing where there was a change was these houses which were being abandoned and torn down, and they are still. We lose 50,000 of these minka every year. Uh, so it's, it's a kind of a crisis because this is national heritage. But the good news is that really it's in the last few years there's been this boom and a lot of foreigners, and you're kind of one of the more better known and prominent ones, but there are a lot of them, and a lot of Japanese are doing this. And so it's become a kind of an exciting new area and there's new techniques and new materials and uh, people inventing different new kinds of stoves for these houses, uh, the way windows are made, all this stuff is happening. So there's hope, finally, uh, for the Minka. Alex will give us a tour of his house later, but let's go back to the day before when I made my trip from Ibaraki to the island of Shikoku. After a pretty uh, easy flight from Narita to Takamatsu, I've just picked up this rental car and am heading out to Utazu. In Utazu, I'm meeting Alex and we're going to visit an Akia that he wanted to check out and see two machia that he has renovated as guest houses. Then we're going to head out to his house Chiori in the Ia Valley, about two hours drive away. Hello. Hi. Sorry, I got lost. No, uh, the, the parking lot's right around the corner. I'll get in. Oh, okay. What I do see is just, uh, even down in, uh, in the Ia area, actual young people coming in and buying these places. All through here, there are old houses remaining here and there. Uh, but, you know, one by one, they're being torn down, they become parking lots. Uh, it's really, for a lot of these neighborhoods in Japan, this is a last minute uh, mo you know, moment for them. They're disappearing very fast as the old generation goes. So that's partly what we were hoping to do with our houses, for example, here in Utazu. It's just two houses, right? But by showing people, look, these things can be renewed. You can actually live in them as modern people, and it's nice. Then hopefully that has an impact. By the way, where we're going today, I've never been in there. <laughs> so this, this is a place we've had our eye on 
but I hear it's in terrible condition. Kochi? Kochi? Wow. Look at the grass growing on the roof there. So wow. <laughs> This is the kind of place I really love. Show me an ancient abandoned house that's got grass growing in the roof and I'm happy. So how long has this house been vacant for, or unoccupied for? It's more than 10 years, yeah. And it, it might be, this has a kind of 20 year empty feel. Is it okay if I film in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, to film it, it's okay. Ah, <laughs> so we'll start with the other side. This is really grand. It's a city block. Yeah. Yeah, the roof is collapsed. That half of the roof is collapsed. You can see, yeah, the top bridge there was sort of sunken in a bit. But you know, as you well know, since you're, you've done this yourself, it's repairable. People think it's beyond hope, but these, you can bring this back. Back here is the old uh, kitchen area. This looks bad, but I've seen a lot worse. <laughs> this is definitely repairable. And look at the structure, these wonderful beams. This is, of course, the well, right? That would be where the well would have been. So you've uh, rescued worse than this. Oh yeah, we've. Seen, I mean, this this is in pretty good shape compared to well, we uh, some of the houses we did in Ia because they're thatched. The tile, you know, lasts. And in fact, this is very nice, lovely tile that they've got. So even if you repaired this roof, you want to save some of that tile. But Ia, they're thatched. When the thatch goes, I mean, the whole place rots. So. Uh, this is in pretty good shape. How old is the house? Bakumatsu. Bakumatsu this is the end of Edo. 1850s or something like that. So it's Edo. Wow, I don't think I've ever seen that before. That's unique. Musoumado. Musoumado. あ、開けた。そうだ、中から開けるっていう。シニアはもう100年ぐらいで、ここが続いてたのも雪降らして、あれが。It's really one city block. This side seems to be in much better condition. あの、6年前までお住まいになったのはこっちの方ですか、向こう。向こうね。で、ここはどうなの? This part they haven't lived in for 15 mm -hmm. years. You might have had some of these in your house. Unfortunately, we had we yeah. didn't get any oh, nice well, uh, furniture. These things are, are uh, mm. a kind of uh, mm. magamuchi, mm. and, and you see it has the crest of the house. Mm. 
トイレなのか茶室なのかいえいえトイレはねトイレだけどこのちゃんとつくばいがあってそう,そうなんですよ Wow, they, they even have look. They, they, somebody put quite a lot of effort into this garden. This is just, you know, this place is begging to have something done with it. And what I fear, though, is that it will be torn down.、Uh, we are interested, but, you know, we don't have unlimited funds or anything. And,、um, oh, yeah, I, I don't want to see this house disappear.、Mm, look at this run line. Hey, man. Lots of tansu. We're going to have one of these narrow stairways. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now, this is a spectacular space. Because it's quite possible that people have not moved these things for a hundred years. See the slight curve of the, of the lid? Yeah. yeah. And, so, and, and over there you can see again, the, the, this is one of the older black ones、uh, with that curved lid. So, I mean, the, as, as carpentry, they're extraordinary things. But, you know, what can you do with it? Uh, it looks like the lunch place, the time is set. So、okay. we'll have lunch first,、right. and then we'll come back and see the houses. Okay. So, these are examples of what Akia could turn out like. Alex will talk more about his philosophies in renovating old houses when we get to Chiori, and I'll do a more in depth tour of these houses here in another video. Ia Valley is one of the hidden regions of Japan, and since ancient times has been a place of refuge for people that didn't want to be found. Rare for Japan, houses and villages have been built on the mountain sides. Ia was always poor, with the steep slopes making agriculture difficult. The main crop since the 1600s was tobacco.
Chiori was the house that Alex bought in 1973 while hitchhiking around Japan. It was built in the Genroku period about 300 years ago. It had been abandoned for 17 years when he came across it. He talks more about the process of buying and renovating this house in Lost Japan. Alex doesn't live in Chiori now and this house is used as a guest house. It turns out that traditional houses like these have become popular tourist accommodations with Japanese from the cities. Yeah, well, this is uh, one of those Mizia Nansu uh, that are really common in Kyoto. And uh, this one came from an old house in Kamioka. And we brought it here, and when we were making this kitchen table, by the way, there was an idori here. So there are actually three idori in this house, uh, but we made it uh, into the table. And, and you have to kind of come around here to see it. But we've got some uh, big pieces of tochi wood, which are just set on top of the tansu and there's a bit of framework down below and it comes back here and then in the back is a smaller mesia you can see that up here we've got the mugs and uh, soba cups and that sort of thing in here and then here is a kaidan tansu a step tansu which uh, uh, nowadays, they kind of make them, right, as furniture. But this one, if you look on the side, you'll see it's actually been sawed off of a house. It really was an architectural part of an old Kyoto house. The shoji, ever since I first moved in here, I've always had something written on the shoji. And when we uh, last did the big restoration of the house, the old shoji uh, had, were in terrible shape and, and had to be stripped off. So I did these, but the problem is, is we're look, looking at it from the back, right? And on the front, if you come around here, you can really see it. Uh, I mean, it's an obvious enough thing, but the thing about shoji is that you've got these frets on the front. 
So it's not like you could take a brush and write a kanji from the front. So I had to do it on basically backwards writing. And that could only be done if I'd had quite a lot of wine. So this is uh, A backwards and B pretty drunk. But anyway, it says Chiyori. A little more legibly if you look at it from the other side. Those are old sake bottles. A Meiji era or even into Taisho. And they have the name of the brewery. And uh, they were produced in pretty big quantity. You can f still find these in Tokyo now and then. And they're all, all handwritten with the, with the uh, you know, the name of the brewer. People think that I'm sort of a, a historical restoration person. And actually I'm not. And I'm not in the business of saying this is the way it was in Meiji or something like that. And my whole uh, take, which is kind of European, really, it's the way people live in old European cities, is you take these houses and you pull them into the modern age which has not been done in Japan. So in Japan, you restored it flawlessly to its original, uh, you know, old period, and then it was forever unlivable, right? You couldn't change one plug, it was freezing cold, you know, or you tore it down and built something out of tin and plastic. But there's this middle ground, and the middle ground is where you make it comfortable, and you m make it a place that modern people would live in, and mo by modern people, I don't, uh, it, that's Japanese, Amer Americans, Europeans, whatever, ties. Pretty much everybody has a certain standard nowadays, I think, of comfort. And so, for example, these floors, we were freezing for years. We would come up here over the new year and sit by the, you know, huddle around the Irori, which you have burning logs here. And, and you could feel the cold air blowing up through these floorboards. There was nothing under them. So, of course, now we've put in insulation. The area around the Irori, we have underfloor heating, uh, which we've done in as many houses as we could. We do double-paned glass. Uh, Japan is actually, you know, Japan has wooden carpentry skills, such as are not known in the rest of the world. And look at this. This is wood, wood-framed, but it's double-paned. And the double-paned glass is the equivalent of, you know, three big burning uh, wood stoves. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing the, uh, the ability, the, that, that little bit of air in between apparently really uh, does the trick. Uh, plus, of course, we have gas heaters here and the gas lines are all under the floors. Uh, so the house is warm. The thing that's really different about the Ia houses is there are no ceilings. And it's because they dried the tobacco on bamboo, uh, big, huge pieces of bamboo, and they were hanging over your head. So when you walked in, it was like when you were walking into the, a, a deep jungle because it was filled with tobacco leaves right down to head level. And because they're wide open, you get this cathedral-like open grandness to it, which you just don't get even in very big houses like the ones in Shirakawa which are three times the height of this, easily, but because each floor has a ceiling, you're never getting this effect. But of course, there is always a rain of soot coming down, and in the winter it's freezing cold, so people needed a little cubbyhole and area to uh, sleep in. And so they always, these houses always had exactly like this, what they called the nema, the sleeping room, and it has its own, it's the only place it has a ceiling, and it has doors, and it can be kind of sealed off. So you can kind of crawl in there and get some warmth in the winter. So this was uh, the old sleeping area. And we basically, I mean, kept this. Uh, but it, but it, uh, this is one of these things where really most of the work we've done on this house is invisible. So this looks totally like the original Nema, but air conditioning vents. <laughs> So you can be warm in the winter and cool. I slept in nice, cool air last night. Um, you know, it's, it's things like that that have made this house livable. The screens that you see here and there are from my collection that I've brought up from Kyoto. All the houses that I do with not only Chiori, but the other houses, as you would have seen in Utazu, I lend them floor lamps and screens and scroll, anything that is a little extra that's needed. Uh, I, take out of my storehouse and bring down here. In fact, this is like a giant storehouse for me. By the way, how many houses have you renovated in total? Well, if you add in, if you add in the Machia that I did in Kyoto, it's, it's over 40. Um, 
Yeah. So we basically we did 10 in Kyoto and then there's been another 30 or so since then in the country. So now my specialty is totally not in the city of Kyoto, but in the countryside, because this is my starting point. I love Kyoto, but my base is, is this. And so, and the countryside needs it. Because one thing that I realized after we'd done the Kyoto houses is it doesn't matter what you build in Kyoto, you know, people will come. Places like this are dying. They need that extra uh, pull to get people to come and stay and understand what the uh, attraction is. And then in here is our beautiful bath. Yeah. It's the Hinoki Cedar. And of course under those tiles we have the, the underfloor heating. One of the things, people tend to think that I'm somehow in the real estate business, like I'm this landowner or something. I actually own only one house in the world, and it's this one. And all of these other houses belong either to the original owners or to the city or township that's commissioned them. And they're public works projects. And, you know, I've written the book on the damage done by public works in this country. But what I always say when I give talks about these things, public works are not the enemy. It's the content of it. And so Japan needs its old houses to be restored and made usable and be used, you know, for that heritage to be brought alive, right? That's valuable to society. They need electric uh, utility lines to be buried. A uh, lot huge places in Japan, such as Ia, have no proper water system and et cetera. So the, the real uh, social benefit of, of, of construction has yet to be achieved because instead it's all being, you know, roads where you don't need them and bridges to nowhere and dams that are destructive and etc. So I always see the, 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 the restoration of these houses as creative and constructive public works. Nagoro is an example of a village fading away. Once home to over 300 residents, there are now only a few people left here. For 20 years, a lady from the village has been making hundreds of scarecrows scattered throughout the town, representing the lost villages and village life.
mean, the theme of what we're trying to do in, in these villages with these old houses is to try to revive what we can because the depopulation in Japan is really severe. And what you see here is a kind of an epiphany. It's the end of the road for what happens to these villages. And it's a, it's a cry from the heart. It's a pretty strong social statement and it's heart-rending and bizarre and all of those feelings all mixed up. It's, a, it's an extraordinary comment on what Japan's now going through. But some young people are returning. The Chiori Trust, established by Alex, has renovated and now runs eight more thatched Minka guest houses in nearby Ochiai. This restaurant we're visiting now is run by ex staff from Chiori. So, this is kind of what the original pathways and walkways of Ia were like. So when I would be walking up from the river to Chiori, it would be on something like this with the occasional st stones or something along the way. Wow. Yeah. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Kimashite yo. There are literally a handful of rice paddies in all of Ia, but there are some of them. Ii ne koko. ね。いいでしょう。すごくいいの。え。はい。
それは知ったけど、稲森さん書いてるの知ってたけど。で、稲森さん今ちょっと千葉の方で仕事してるので、そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。そうです。While the demographics of Japan mean that almost all depopulated villages will never be resettled as in their heyday, tourism projects like Chiori, as well as other rural development projects, give hope that some of these places will not die completely and the heritage and traditions and houses of Japan will not be lost forever. After dropping Alex off at the train station, I headed back to the airport. Big thanks to Alex for organizing this trip. I return to my own slice of Japan inspired. Good story, but when are you gonna finish the deck?